Hey guys, this is John and welcome to another Climbing the Rating Ladder video. I'm playing Michael Siebel, a player rated 1339 in a 10 plus 5 game on chess.com. Okay, and we have a Scandinavian defense. Here we go, my favorite opening being used against me. I love it. <laughs> okay, and Black plays knight f6 on move 2. This is the so-called modern Scandinavian. I'm a proponent of queen takes d5 instead, although this is a perfectly legitimate line as well. And... If black plays this way, they're usually hoping white goes um, into pawn preservation mode and tries to keep the, the d5 pawn. There are ways I can try to disrupt them and also keep the pawn, but I'm going to propose simply playing d4 here. This is my go-to. Just allowing black to win the pawn back and looking to develop smoothly and probably try to get in c4. Okay, so this is a potentially big difference between the knight f6 on move 2 variation and queen takes d5 on move 2. With queen takes d5, knight c3, um, queen takes d5, move 2, knight c3, move 3, that is, white would be blocking the c-pawn. But in this case, I am not blocking the c-pawn. So if I want to play c4 here, I can go ahead and do that. I'm a little surprised black takes with the queen now because I can transpose it to lines I'm familiar with. But if I play c4, I can look to build around, uh, around that pawn uh, situation in the center. So I'm leaning towards doing that here. Just taking a look at something like queen e4, seeing if my opponent can claim some sort of play there, but I can probably block with the knight, for instance. If I block with the bishop, I do lose this pawn here. There's also bishop e3. Ought to be okay. Uh, knight g4, though, may be kind of annoying, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go for it because I think I have a couple good options, and this looks like the principled move. So let's go ahead and play it. Yeah, I think knight c3 would have been fine, too. If you want to decline the pawn in a smart way, you can also play knight f3 on move 3. That's perfectly fine. Bishop b5 check, I think, is also a good move. Maybe one of the more critical moves against knight f6. I wouldn't play c4 on move 3. c4 can lead to uh, potential issues if after e6 or c6 you accept the pawn. Some gambit continuations in black's favor. All right, so my opponent's considering their choices here. Hope you're all doing well. Had a, a wild last climbing the rating ladder game, so I hope this one's a little more laid back. But yeah, do check that out if you missed that video. That's the Jobava London video against the super prepared opponent. Yeah, Black really thinking where to put this queen here. So I think queen e4 is kind of the critical move check just to see if my development gets kind of disrupted. If black were to play queen d8, I'm going to be pretty satisfied with the opening, again, having achieved the pawns on d4, c4 with the knight coming behind. I could play knight c3 right away there, maybe knight f3. Uh, maybe knight f3 would be a little more accurate in that instance because it just puts a clamp on the e5 square. I'm not worried about queen a5 check here, by the way. As soon as I say that, black plays it. I can play bishop d2 or knight c3. Bishop d2 hits the queen, queen b6. Yeah, I could look to maybe even gambit the pawn in some fashion. Bishop d2, queen b6, let's say uh, knight f3, for instance. Queen takes b2, knight c3. That's extremely dangerous for black if that were to happen. Let me think for a moment. Bishop d2, queen b6, knight f3, maybe bishop c4 is a move. Yeah, black could be going for something like that. I could play bishop d2, bishop c3 if I want to just cleanly defend everything. So several good options. Yeah, I think I'm going to go bishop d2. And let's put black to the test. Queen b6 and gambit the b-pawn. Those who follow my Twitch stream in particular will know that I'm um, working on some Scandinavian material right now. I've mentioned this on my YouTube channel as well, but... I have been looking at Scandinavian positions every day in preparing this course material. So even though we're not in a line that I looked at because I'll be focusing on queen takes d5 on move two, many of the ideas can also dovetail with knight f6 and certainly a position like we have here where time and time again, the engine recommends not worrying about this b-pawn, encouraging your opponent to take it in many cases I think I'm going, to, I'm going to look forward to playing this position if I get to go knight c3. 
So another line I'm thinking here, let's say bishop g4 is played, trying to capture on f3 and then take d4. I think I would play calmly. So I would play uh, bishop g4, knight c3, bishop takes f3, queen takes f3, because if queen takes d4 there, there's queen takes b7. Queen takes b7. So haven't exactly worked all the details out there yet, but that catches my eye for sure. I like the look of that. Maybe knight c3, bishop takes f3, queen takes f3, knight c6 could be played. d5, knight d4, perhaps that's playable, but I don't quite trust it for black. Queen d3, queen takes b2, rook b1, knight c2, king d1. I'm kind of going out on the calculation curve there. But yeah, let's continue developing. I'm not going to knee-jerk reaction, hit this bishop, or play bishop e2. I know many of you play those moves when you're confronted with bishop g4, but consider the threat. I think black is looking to take in a lot of cases and take here. Um, maybe I could have done that and with bishop e2 claim that I'm attacking b7, but I think this is a, a move I'm almost certainly going to have to play. It's a, it's a necessary move, whereas I'm not so sure I want to waste time on a pawn move or if my bishop even wants to go here. It might be better to keep my options open with that. So just trying to prioritize the moves that I know are integral to my setup. Also, if black takes here, it's nice that the queen defends the rook. So I could see black capturing for sure, maybe playing knight c6. That's another option. I wonder if knight c6, black starts to get in trouble with c5 because this queen is looking somewhat deprived of squares. When the knight hits the c6 square, the queen can't swing laterally to uh, the e6 square, for instance. So putting black to the test here early in this game, but this is what I would think about trying to set up against the knight f6 line, is trying to get those pawns to d4 and c4. Okay, queen e6 check. Understandable, because if I black with the bishop, bishop takes f3 would force me to take with the pawn. But it looks like the issue is I can play bishop e3. So let's play that. And this bishop controls c4, so black cannot capture this pawn. And I'm still defending here nicely. So that does feel like a mistake. Potentially a fairly sizable one. Black has already played one, two, three, four queen moves in the first eight moves. And even for a Scandinavian, that may be pushing it. So they have to start thinking about getting their remaining minor pieces out and trying to castle. But now knight c6 runs into the fork d5. So that's a further issue that black has to contend with. Maybe black can play g6, bishop g7, try to castle short. I could look for a moment to play d5. As a default, I could just build up bishop e2 and castles as well and kind of wait to do something with these. Okay, black plays knight d7, so I think black understands that they didn't want to go to c6. But yeah, starting to look at ways to attack the queen. Also, I wonder if I may get a good chance for knight g5 coming up. Let's say bishop e2, and if black castles, knight g5 is looking nice already with the attack on the queen and f7. Yeah, I could definitely think about this, d5. Let's say queen f5, bishop d3, but then there's bishop takes f3. Queen b3 is another option here, but let's just play bishop e2. I'm pretty satisfied with this. I like the extra layer of security here. If black takes on f3, I take and then takes here, I can take here. Although maybe that's playable for black because they do have rook b8 at that point. So I probably should have thought about that line prior to going bishop e2. I could play g takes f3 and just be content with the bishops and the strong center, but that's something I'll look at afterwards. Yeah, black does castle, and now I think this knight g5 move is simply strong. Let's play it. Forking the queen and the pawn. This is something black has to watch when castling long, is the fact that f7 can become weak. And if you don't have the development, especially if there's a bishop sitting on f8, I'd say, which prevents a rook from reaching that square, you don't have the development to back this up. That could be an issue. Okay, bishop takes e2. So I could think about knight takes e6. Bishop takes d1 and then knight takes d8. 
But at the end of that line, we can't assume that black's just going to take on d8 and we take the bishop, whereupon I'd be up in exchange if I counted that correctly. So knight takes e6, bishop takes d1, knight takes d8. Ask yourself, what would black play there? It's a little calculation exercise for you. And you can pause the video if you like. I think at that point, black would be able to play the move bishop h5. Save the bishop and guard the f7 square. So preventing knight takes f7, which is my only escape route. And I may just be worse in that position. They're going to get two minors for the rook. So let's take back with the queen. I spent too much time on that move, 51 seconds, but I just wanted to point that out. Because we could look at the in-between move. It is a asymmetric capture sequence where it appeared at first sight like I might win the exchange, but this is just much easier and uh, better than that, o that other line because black cannot safely continue guarding f7 with their queen on the next move. So I'm going to pick up a pawn and an exchange at minimum. Might win the rook entirely if black fails at getting my knight in the corner, because very likely I'm going to go after this one on h8. This rook is undefended versus this rook. But I'm still scanning like where this queen can go to cause problems. You know, I looked at queen g4. I can take if I want and then take on f7. Again, it's nice that this pawn is defended. It's actually crucial to this combination because if black could take on c4, they would defend f7. So looking decisive, I don't see a move for black that's going to keep them afloat here. I do think if we go back a couple moves, while well, my opponent's thinking, this would have been the critical move. Bishop takes f3, bishop takes f3, queen takes c4, bishop takes b7, and then rook b8. I do wonder what would have happened there. And I might not even have wanted to go down that line. Maybe I would have played g takes f3, but then black does get to mess up my structure. So I'll be looking at that in the analysis. I hate to beat up on my my favorite opening. <laughs> I don't want to count this as a win yet, but it's looking that way. It it you know it just pains me every time I have to play the white side against the Scandinavian. Maybe that's why I avoid e4 in my games at the higher levels. Is I don't want to face the Scandi. <laughs> Yeah, black tanking here, trying to find a move. It's understandable, but just nothing really to do. Queen f5 played. Let's take the pawn. At this point, if I were playing black, I would strive for maximum chaos. So I think a move like e5 is smart here because when you're losing, it doesn't matter the manner in which you lose. It doesn't matter if you even play a line that Stockfish dislikes, which is <laughs> probably expected most of the time for us humans. Um, what matters is, did you give yourself a chance and did you make your opponent's life as miserable as possible in converting that advantage? So I think I would have played e5, just trying to get the bishop in the game, trying to blow open the center. Maybe I'll show a line or two like that afterwards. Okay, knight e4, so black's attacking the knight here. But I'm going to take the rook and let's take the rook in the corner. Just make it as difficult as possible for, for black to win this back. It stands to reason they might go g6, bishop g7 soon. Maybe they'll trade on c3 first. I can probably pre-move this capture. So I'm not going to get too attached to that knight. If I win another pawn for it, I think that's that's great. I still need to castle. Okay, black plays knight to b6. All right, so now I do see that I can trade knights and go knight f7 and hit the rook also flashed across my my mind if I could play g4 in this position because black has a hard time staying in touch with the knight like g4 queen e6 and d5 or bishop f4 or something but this looks pretty good knight takes e4 knight f7 in view of it hitting the rook yeah maybe black can take on g2 but I can castle I can play queen f1 that looks certainly convincing to me so I'm gonna go for it it would be convenient to trade queens if I could, just to simplify. So 
you know, say my pawn are on h3, it'd be kind of nice to play queen g4 and just swap. But I'm certainly happy with pretty much any course of events here that keep me up material with a safe position. So yeah, let's go play knight f7. These pawns are still defended, by the way. So no new threats being introduced here. Hitting the rook. I do think this is critical. Again, even if I was unsure about this move at this point in the game, I would go for it for black. No questions asked. Because at least it gives gives me a chance to maybe make a mistake. Like knight takes d8, queen takes h1. There's queen f1 at that point. But if I were to play king d2, let's say, and hang this rook on a1, well, black's right in the game at that point. So you got to give your opponents chances to make mistakes when you're just busted. And in chess in general, I mean, it's good to play sometimes open-ended moves that even the computer may not say are strictly the best, but if it increases the likelihood your opponent's going to make an error, from a human standpoint, it's justified. Often more than justified. Okay, time getting super low for my opponent. They're going to be under a minute here. There, there is the five-second increment. So I think one aspect of this castle's decision by black on move nine, that's where I got to play knight g5, is that black wasn't looking at what my next move would be in that position. I think they just felt that they needed to get castled, they needed to get their king to safety, and then kind of switched off their, um, their prophylactic mind, let's say, about what my options were. So always, always, always have that question in mind, like what will my opponent do on the next move if it's their move? Just a fundamental question we have to be asking ourselves. It's hard to do that on every move, uh, especially subconsciously, which is the goal over time. Okay, rook d7. I'm thinking about knight e5, further get this knight out and hit the rook. Could just castle here. Castle king side looks pretty good. I don't think I want to castle queen side just because it's a little more open over there. If I castle, there is this move. Rook takes d4, though, using the pin. So you know what? I'm leaning towards this one. Yeah, I'm going to play knight g5, and if takes on g2, I think I'm going to castle queen side at that point. Because that connects my rooks. I won't be losing the rook on h1. And even though my king feels a little more open on that wing, as I said a moment ago, this queen is now kind of stuck on the king side, which is my biggest concern in castling this way, is that the queen was sort of peering down this diagonal. But now I see that I have this threat. Um... Although black can come back to c6. So yeah, maybe I'll have to throw in b3 first before I resume trying to attack that queen. Yeah, let's do that. Mm, okay, black can come over here now in some cases. Still completely winning. Maybe there was some more clinical way to play that. Like uh, queen f3 or something after queen takes g2. Didn't want to lose the pawn on c4. But yeah, still looks plenty good. All right, so I think black's ready to play bishop a3 in this position. King b1 looks sensible here. Queen f3, maybe d5, although there's moves like knight takes d5. Yeah, I think I like king b1. Queen f3 definitely up there too. Actually, queen f3 is quite convincing, isn't it? Because even though black gets in a check, after king b1, this queen is starting to run out of squares. If queen d6 at that point, maybe c5, and go for the fork on the queen and the knight. So yeah, using the, the bully pulpit of the queen trade, the potential queen trade here, to our advantage. Yeah, black plays the check. Let's just go here. King c2 is fine as well. Looks like black's not going to make it on the clock. Okay. So we win the game. Yeah, queen d6. I was going to play c5 more than likely. Thanks to my opponent for the game. We'll tell them that in the chat. So 
I think black was just kind of mixing systems here. Queen takes d5, usually not played. Knight takes d5 or bishop g4. If you're a fan of the Portuguese variation, bishop g4 is a move you might be familiar with. There's a line, bishop g4, and if white gets greedy, f3, bishop f5, c4. Black can play e6, d takes e6, knight c6. And if white keeps munching pawns, this is a dangerous position for white. I used to play this a little bit uh, when I was a kid from the black side, and always, I was always ecstatic when I got this position with all the pieces either in the game or ready to get in the game for black. But people are savvier these days. I don't think they allow you to have that much fun. Uh, normally, certainly past a certain rating level, you can't expect to get that. So on bishop g4, if you play this Portuguese variation, you can expect to see a lot of bishop e2 or knight f3s. And yes, you can win the pawn back at will. You know, I personally think a lot of these positions play more like an, like an Alekhine's defense, a Jochen's defense, where again... White may look to set up the pawns like this. And there's certainly some arguments that black has, like pressure against the pawns with the knights. But personally, I don't like fighting against the d4, c4, c4 center as much in the Scandinavian. And the queen takes d5 lines allow you to bypass that a lot because, again, knight c3 is by far the most popular move, which blocks the c3 pawn. And in my Scandinavian course, I'll be recommending queen a5 but here, by the way. If white plays d4... Black can either play e5 or knight c6, immediately attack this pawn, which prevents, for the moment, this c4 move. Uh, if white goes c4 here, by the way, how many of you know, if we flip this around, how black would want to react in this position? Because I just got done talking about how d4, c4 may be desirable. So it stands to reason, like, what if white were to play this? You can pause your video if you, if you want to answer that question. So the reason c4 isn't good here is black can play exactly queen e4 check. Okay, this is the best move, queen e4 check. Because however white blocks this check, there's a downside. If you block with the knight, you lose the pawn on c4. If you block with the bishop, you'd have to give up this pawn. And I don't think this is quite sound for white. I would take black here. I don't think white has enough for the pawn. So that only leaves queen e2. And here, black can just trade queens. And... Because of the pawn on c4 without the pawn being on d4 as a counterpart, this is kind of uh, a weak square. Black can look to, to play to occupy it at some point, maybe e5 coming. I think c5 is also a good move here. This is not a structure you want from the white side with this d-pawn being backward. Okay, so this is a long way of demonstrating that. Logistically, if black goes queen takes d5, it's a little harder for white to set up a d4, c4 operation. Knight f3 is the most prominent way to do this. And there is theory here, like bishop g4, bishop e2, knight c6 looking to castle. But white can still attempt this if they want. For example, d4, and black dare not try to take the pawn here. This loses tactically to bishop takes c6, removing the defender of the queen. So I think my opponent was kind of trying to play in this style, but by the time they got to a position with the bishop out here, um, the knight may be thinking of coming to c6. They had moved their queen around so many times, it was already awkward. And the queen was over on e6, blocking the e-pawn. So just not a great version for black. So yeah, I do think probably somewhere around here is getting critical for black if they want to um, maintain a reasonable game. I think knight c6 is probably a critical move at this point, attacking this pawn. So knight c6, d5. And then maybe knight d4, something like that. I can get sharp. I mean, I like my space edge there, but we'll see what the computer thinks about that. Yeah, and after knight c3, queen e6, I was feeling pretty good. I do wonder for myself, though, I wonder if bishop e2 is a bit of an inaccuracy. Because had black played this, I saw too late that this would be a problem after rook b8. And I don't see a great move here for white. Probably just have to move my bishop back and allow takes, but then black's up a pawn, and I can't castle. So I probably would have had to um, play g takes f3, which is what I was mentioning I was kind of trying to avoid. I have a feeling the engine's going to say this is still better for white because of the, the, the nice pawn control and the bishops, but I've certainly seen worse positions for black. This is probably playable. Maybe the queen will land here or here, and black's, black's in the game at this point for sure. Maybe knight b5 black has to watch. That's probably a move I should have mentioned. Um, maybe 
actually in the game continuation, maybe this is a strong candidate move in knight b5 hitting c7 because if black plays rook c8, I can take here. And if they castle, I can take on a7 with check. So I probably should have thought about this move. Yeah, like if the queen comes back here, maybe there's d5. That's That looks better and better the more I look at it. So another move to keep on your radar. It's kind of unusual that you would play knight b5 this early and the queen is not defending the pawn, but it can happen in some cases in the Scandi. Yeah, and I think after knight g5, it's just, it's a lost position for black. Black can try to keep the bishops on board for now here, hoping that I take, in which case their queen would monitor f7, but I'm not going to take. I'm going to play like I did in the game. I do think later... Probably as black, you got to try for maximum chaos in a position like this, e5. Because let's consider if I take on h8, and then black takes d4, forking these two pieces. Bishop takes d4, maybe rook e8, which is defended by the knight. Bishop e3, um, bishop b4, hitting the knight. At least black gets pretty active here. Maybe knight e4 coming next. Yeah, white's still winning in this position, but this is a much better chance at least. Okay, so let's click into the game review. Okay, I got a 90.7 to my opponent's 77.8. Let's turn off the feedback there. I always find that annoying. <laughs> yep, so knight f6. I think in order of popularity, we're going to see d4 and knight f3 being up there. I think at amateur level, you can expect knight c3 a lot as well, even though black can just take. And again, I... I personally don't like knight c3 as much when you have the option of playing this move later. Just take a quick look at the book. Yeah, d4, knight c3, super popular. Doesn't score that well for white, though. It's exactly the type of move, though, that at amateur level you're going to see really pretty often. Bishop b5 check is definitely interesting. I know some people consider this the main test of the knight f6 scandy. I didn't want to try to get into some sort of theoretical battle here, but the main idea is on bishop d7 blocking, you play bishop c4, which is kind of a funny operation because we could have gone bishop c4 right away, but the difference is with bishop c4 right away, black can take d5 if they want, and the queen defends the knight. Whereas with bishop b5, bishop d7, this little dance, and then bishop c4, you're basically saying, I think the bishop is worse off on d7 than c8 because it blocks the black queen. And then black can go here. There's some sharp stuff where, it's, again, it's another line where white can try to hold onto this pawn for a while. Black often has ways to try to get it back. So interesting line. That's probably one of the better lines if you're looking for a more theoretical option for white. But I'm pretty happy with this. Again, if you play c4, I used to be very happy about this from the black side whenever I got this position. I usually played c6 here. This is a great gambit. For black, again, notice this bad pawn structure. e5, bishop, c5 can happen. Black has full compensation here. There's also e6. This is the Icelandic gambit. Take on e6, bishop takes e6. And with black's next move often being queen e7, believe it or not. Yeah, like this. I guess knight c6 is played a lot too. They can threaten bishop takes c4. And sometimes black plays knight c6 and castles very quickly here. So... I just don't find this move to be aesthetically pleasing when white hasn't moved the d pawn, so I wouldn't recommend that. Okay, so d4. Yeah, black takes with the queen. You can see that that's the third most popular option here and really far down the list compared to the other two moves in terms of popularity. Knight takes d5 and bishop g4. Again, knight, uh, bishop g4, Portuguese variation. I probably would have gone knight f3 here, and this could actually... Uh, lead to some positions I'm somewhat familiar with from the queen takes d5 material that I'm working on. So black's looking to pressure d4 and try to castle. You'll see bishop e2 a lot in this position, take uh, something like this, kind of a more calm continuation where white defends these pawns, prevents black from taking them. Again, white can try to lo look for c4 at some point. I don't think this is anything... Too exciting, just a slight pull for white in practice with the center. But yeah, knight takes d5. Again, knight f3, c4. Black can fianchetto this bishop sometimes. That actually looks like the most popular approach according to theory. You can kind of see how this looks like an Alakine's defense, if you're familiar with that. 
again, that's just always my my instinct when I see these positions. Like, oh, it looks more like e4, knight f6 on move one. Uh, some of the options in that particular opening than it does like a Scandinavian. This doesn't scream Scandinavian to me. Okay, so queen takes d5 instead. Yeah, and I went ahead and played c4. Let's load the engine up and see what it says. c4 is up there along with knight f3. Could also play knight c3, which gets back into queen takes d5 stuff. Black would probably play the move that they um, would play in the queen takes d5 line if they had experience there. So on c4, it looks like this move is critical. Interesting. So check. I did mention this, and on bishop e3, e5. Mm-hmm. Okay, I didn't consider e5. But the eval is fine for black. That is an okay evaluation. Blasting open the center, looking for bishop b4. So if I play knight c3, hitting the queen, bishop b4. Hey, I mean, the computer at first sight here indicates this is fine for black. So... I believe it. I believe it. Black looks pretty active here, and I think the queen position is justified for the moment. So it makes me think maybe c4 is uh, a slight inaccuracy. Yeah, I could play this one too. Maybe I would have stopped and thought about that because that does keep these pawns defended. You know, when I was showing queen takes d5 c4 and how after queen e4 check, knight e2, black could take here on c4. Not so in this case because uh, white has the pawn on d4 instead. So yeah, th this does look a little bit better in this case, doesn't it? Something like this, bishop b4, bishop d2, hit the queen, take, take with the bishop, okay. There's the line of the Sicilian or the Nimzo Indian that's kind of similar to this too. White gets the bishop pair. Maybe nothing groundbreaking, but I might've gone for that had they checked. All that said, maybe this is more flexible. Maybe I should just play knight f3 and play these positions. If black wants to go for this sort of thing. Okay, so c4, black plays queen a5. I was debating between knight c3 and bishop d2 here. The engine does give the nod to bishop d2. Okay. Yeah, because if here it's recommending e5 again. Yeah. So bishop d2 hit the queen. Yeah, and here I played knight f3 defending. It's also giving c5. Check bishop e2 and then g6. Okay, interesting. Here, and now I went knight c3. Yep, the engine approves. So again, if black were to take here on uh, b2, I was probably just going to play knight c3, have my queen defend. And the computer says this is playable. I would be pretty scared as black. But bishop f5? Yeah, that does stop rook b1. And what about here? Just knight a6. Uh-huh, defending. And the queen is not getting trapped because note here, black has the c2 square to go to, thanks to the bishop on f5. Okay, so what's my best way of playing, according to the engine, after bishop f5? The engine's saying I should just chill. Play, yeah, bishop e2 or rook c1. Yeah, I like rook c1 because that stops the bishop from coming in. Okay, knight e4, though. Knight takes. I think it's saying just go ahead and get Castle John as quickly as possible. Don't worry about losing another pawn. But interesting. You know, I was baiting black into playing this move. And it seems like only with something precise here, like this bishop f5 line, is black going to be okay. Maybe c6 too. But in general, I think white's pretty happy to gambit this pawn if they have a big lead in development and a couple pawns out there too. d4, c4. That's pretty nice. Okay, here, knight c3. So if bishop takes f3 followed by queen takes d4, black would be in a world of hurt because of this move. Queen takes b7, hitting the rook. In some cases, maybe queen c8 as well. So I felt like knight c6 was critical here. The engine is giving an edge to white. So what happens if knight c6? Interesting, not d5, but c5. So now c5 is good. Uh, it's probably just because of queen takes b2, rook b1, queen a3, and then knight b5. Mm-hmm. Could throw this in first. White should take with the, the pawn in this case to keep control over squares like this. But yeah, so let's say black takes here now. Rook b1. And there's no bishop on f5 for black, so they can't go here. 
They got to play queen a3 if they want to save the queen for now. But then this hits the queen and hits c7. And note that the bishop controls a5, so black can't come back. Apparently, rook b3 is also good. Probably really similar here. Yeah, queen a5, knight b5, hit the queen. That's probably even worse for black in a lot of cases. Okay, so even though I wasn't calculating all the ramifications correctly, it seems like my gut was correct that giving black the option of taking these pawns was, was justified. But I would have been curious if I had made that that call correctly after knight c6, that c5 is the way to go, because the engine does say pretty conclusively here that c5 is the best move. So black can also play something like, yeah, c6, g6, knight bd7. I mean, the eval is in an acceptable range at this point. c6 giving the queen an ability to back out here. Yeah, interesting. Knight a4 hit the queen. Queen d8. Queen b3. That's creative. It's not so bad for black. Like, black has a borderline acceptable setup here, I'd say. Um, I'm happy I got in c4, but I do have to watch the d4 pawn constantly. So this is still playable. But yeah, I felt like this check wasn't the best. Bishop e3. And black has to be very careful here. This is getting into clear advantage white territory. Because blocking that e-pawn... Getting behind a development like this often cannot work out so well for black. Yeah, and here I really should, should have considered knight b5. So kudos to those of you who looked at this move. I only thought about this in the postmortem, jumping up with the knight and threatening the fork. The engine indicates that's the best move. And black probably has to give up a pawn or play something really ugly like king d8 to defend it, where they forfeit castling and the king will be stuck in the center. So yeah, should have looked at that. Again, there's always ways to improve. Even in these games where I'm playing much lower rated players, like trust me, I'm looking to find improvements. Yeah, and here, bishop takes f3 was the move for black. So if I take with the bishop, again, queen takes c4. Still showing an edge for white even here down the pawn. But not exactly what I would have had in mind. So I'm almost certain I would have taken with the g-pawn here. Keep this defended. Okay, it's about a half pawn advantage for white, but that's we can't read into that too much. Um, certainly with white having the doubled pawns too, that's that's not an unexpected evaluation and plenty of pieces on board still. Yeah, so castles. Oh, interesting. Okay, so I thought this was pretty easily winning. Maybe the eval will change, but it's only showing plus two when I'm winning a pawn and then a rook or an exchange. Yeah, but look at the move. E5. Yeah, if black purely wants to just keep it to an exchange, rook g8 is the way to go. Because then knight takes d8, king takes d8. They're down an exchange and a pawn. Um, I think this should be even more winning than plus 2.3, what the engine's showing here. So interesting that it's only that. I would have thought it would be more. But... I would have gone for this e5 move, I think. I think this is the way to just try to create maximum chaos. Like, let's see if knight takes h8, if I play the greedy way. Yeah, I was showing this line. I think I was saying bishop b4 here. Yeah, also bishop c5 makes a lot of sense. Hit the knight, attack here. Castles, I probably should just write that knight off. So if I play something like this, queen g6, hit here, hit here. I'm pinned. This is still kind of messy if I if I insist on trying to save the knight, let's say. So that's that's how you want to think in these positions. Like when you know you're losing, you just like reconciled yourself to that fact. Go into maximum chaos mode. And you don't have to immediately go nuts. Like don't confuse chaos with just playing straight up bad moves. But you want to ask yourself what would be the most annoying move for my opponent to face in converting this position? Even if it's just something like they have to play like a few awkward moves in a row to prove the advantage, like make them do that, make them go down that road because they might uh, try to avoid it. They might, a lot of people try to win cleaner than the position uh, demands and in the process give back a lot of their edge. But yeah, 98, I felt pretty good now. Just pick up the rook. It's going to take black some moves to recover that night. 
And in the game, they didn't manage to recover the knight at all. <coughs> yeah, queen takes g2 possible here. Probably would have castled this way. Kind of like the game. Yeah, castle's queen side is fine. I was kind of nitpicking my decision making here. Looks okay. Queen c6 is like mildly annoying, but doesn't turn out to matter that much. B3, yeah. Says I can play d5 even. Let them take. Oh, is it because I play knight e6 at the end? Uh huh. And the bishop perishes on the square. That's kind of sad for black. <laughs> but this was plenty good as well. Yeah, and here black flagged. Again, queen d6. I was going to play c5 and go for the fork. Okay, so I think a pretty instructive Scandinavian game. I think I highlighted the differences between knight f6 and queen takes d5 uh, pretty well. If you have any questions on the differences in these lines or what you can expect in some of these variations, let me know. Again, from the white side, if you face this as an e4 player, I would recommend not holding onto the pawn. If you do want to hold onto the pawn, maybe look at this stuff. There's also knight bd7 after bishop b5. Again, I think the engines do like this for white, but you can keep it simple if you want d4, knight f3, and just in general develop and try to look for that aggressive center with d4, c4. So, yeah, not a perfect game by me. Like, I missed a couple things. Again, taking here would have been okay. I should have looked at knight b5. And even, you know, even the consequences of queen takes b2 could have been interesting. Like in the case of bishop f5 after that, guarding b1 and c2. All right, so thanks to my, my opponent, Michael, for the game. As always, let me know if you guys have any feedback or comments. Glad this didn't get down to the last four tenths of a second. And hope you're all having a good week, and I'll talk to you guys again soon.